nice. I've now, I've lived in Iowa for about two years. Um, and my personal experience has been really amazing. Okay, I still complain about the weather. But that's not going to change. <laughs> um, coming to Iowa, I had no idea what I was getting into. I expected deserted cities. Then I came to Waverly, got exactly that. <laughs> when I was back home, it was funny to hear what people had to say about the United States. I still remember the day before I left home. Uh, I was still a teenager at that time, hard to believe. <laughs> And I was out with my friends. Uh, of course, we weren't partying. <laughs> but a friend of mine comes up to me and asks me, so you're going to the United States, right? I'm like, yep. He then asks, so um, I hear Pakistanis are, uh, receive a special treatment at the airport. Like, special, definitely. <laughs> um, <laughs> There, I mean, there, this is actually true, but there are other things that people believe in, even more radical ideas that are out there, and people believe in such things. I'm embarrassed to admit some of the things that I used to believe in. I, I, still, believe, I still have these silly ideas or views about the FBI. Now, let me give you some context. I'm a Muslim, and I'm also studying political terrorism. <laughs> Not a good combination, I know. <laughs> The whole process of researching for my class is just exciting. When I'm in my room, I dim the lights, peek through the window to see if the coast is clear. Then I open my laptop, go on to incognito mode. You know, that doesn't help, it's just for the peace of mind. <laughs> I remember the first time I was, I was researching for the class. I typed, what is political terrorism? Since I had no idea, because I've always been busy, not partying, of course. <laughs> but as soon as I pressed enter, my heart was pounding, expecting to hear sirens welling in the distance. It felt like I was in a movie. Of course, I was the main character. <laughs> I still remember rehearsing in my head how I would give my name if they come knocking on my door. What's your name, boy? The name's Bond, Shahzeb Bond. <laughs> I know, right? Sounds strange, since you don't really get to see a lot of Muslim characters being portrayed as a protagonist in movies. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah, but I do believe my situation um, is a sad one. I'm a student. This isn't something that I should be spending my time worrying about. How do you expect me to, spend, to devote my time to all the ladies if I'm worrying about this? <laughs> I mean, if I were in the movies, which I know is quite the hypothetical situation, I'd go up to a girl and be like, hey girl, I'm wanted by the FBI. And then we both ride off into the sunset. <laughs> but that's not how real life works. Reality is, she probably would have screamed and ran away. <laughs> I would still be riding off into the sunset but with police chasing after me. <laughs> now, I personally find this whole situation quite hilarious. But oftentimes, it can get annoying as well, especially when it disrupts my relationships. A month ago, I was studying late at night, and I'm about to head to bed. It was 2 in the morning. I heard a knock on my door. I'm like, oh, crap, they found me. I'm not, I'm not ready for this. I, I hide in my closet. It was my girlfriend. Babe, what were you doing in the closet? Just taking measurements. <laughs> just seeing, just checking how much things can, you know, fit in there. Yeah. I'm smart. <laughs> we broke up. <laughs> I've learned my lesson, though. Now, beginning semester, I would peek through the window to see if anyone was outside. Now, I just open my window and say, guys, come on now, I know you're out there. You don't have to hide. <laughs> it feels as if I'm living a life under a constant spotlight. It's like being a celebrity. 
but all for the wrong reasons. <laughs> There's always, I, f- I feel judged, not only from an individual level, but also from an institutional level. There's always an assumed idea of who I am because of where I come from, the religion I identify with, or the color of my skin, sometimes because of my beard as well. <laughs> but let's look into that. I come from Pakistan, home to 200 million people, majority of which are Muslims. There are 1.8 billion Muslims in the world. If Pakistanis were all Muslims, and we're not, they would be 11% of all the Muslim population in the world. And out of that 11%, out of that 200 million people, I'm just one person. Of course, I accurately represent all of them. Yeah. (laughs) My favorite part is when I meet someone new, and we get into a really engaging conversation, and I make a really good first impact on them, a really good first impression. And then they ask me, are you from India? Ouch. (laughs) It's either that, or are you an Arab? See, now when um, when the semester gets busy, I grow out my beard since I don't really get the time to trim it. That's when I become the Arab or the Middle Easterner. When I shave my beard, that's when I become an Indian. I don't know how the transition works. <laughs> so now, for fun, what I do is I don't shave for two months, just so that people associate an image of me without my beard. And then, ever so suddenly, I shave my beard completely. <laughs> it confuses people. <laughs> because it breaks the perception of who I am. And I love it. (laughs) The other day, um, I heard a knock on my door. Now, this was when I shaved my beard after two months of keeping it. I opened the door. There's this guy, and he asked me, is Shazib in the room? (laughs) Yeah, I like messing around with people, so I change my look quite often. But on top of freaking people out, it freaks my mom out as well. Now, my mom cares about me a lot, so she worries about how I look like. Now, as I said earlier, I've lived in Iowa for about two years now, which means, as you guys know, that I don't get to see the sun quite often, which is a lot of vitamin D deficiency, but not to my mom. (laughs) This past weekend, I was video calling my mom And we're in the middle of a conversation when her face suddenly turns serious. Now, I'm holding the phone like this. She tells me to look left. I look left. She tells me to look right. I look right. I ask my mom, is everything okay? Is something wrong with my face? What she said next caught me off guard. She said, beta, which means son. I really love your complexion right now. I don't think it's going to get any better. So we should get you married right now. You don't need to come back home, because then you'll get a tan. (laughs) And here everyone's like, I need to work on my tan. (laughs) What she said next amused me even more. She said, you need to take a picture of yourself right now and update your Facebook profile picture. (laughs) We'll use it for people to see. (laughs) Oh, how Facebook has impacted us all. You know what I learned the other day? According to Pew Research, Facebook is the biggest source of political news for millennials. I was surprised, even shocked, to find out about that, since I never get to hear any news. So I deemed it as fake news and wanted to uh, unfriend Pew Research from my Facebook as well. (laughs) See, opposing viewpoints cause a dilemma in my head. So I just unfriend anyone who doesn't have the same viewpoints as me. That's why I unfriended everyone on Facebook. (laughs) It was quite a dilemma. Some of them were good friends of mine. (laughs) 
I should probably let my mom know that changing my Facebook profile picture wouldn't get me any girls since I unfriended all, all, all of my friends. Well, maybe not all of them. I'm going to update my Facebook profile uh, status to show that I'm in a complicated relationship with the FBI because that's one friend that's there to stay. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs>